What's up YouTube? This is LDS Reliance. I get a lot of questions about what components I use and how much things cost and where did I get them from. So I thought I would do a video on how much solar panel systems cost. What do they really cost in the real world? So as I was thinking about this, I wanted to divide this into three different categories. The first category would be the small systems. Um, these would be systems like I show in my beginner uh, solar for beginners series where you've got a small 10 or 20 watt solar panel you're just starting out with solar uh, and you're using cheap components that you don't necessarily need to depend upon every day uh, the second category would be like your medium sized systems you graduate into something where you're going to actually use it for something but you're still probably under a thousand watts and uh, it's not something that you're you know you're powering your whole house off of or whatever and the third category would be large production systems like you would kind of have installed on your roof on your home if you were going to power the whole house off or cabin or whatever off of solar and, and you're using the uh, and and this is a kind of a quote unquote mission critical application that you really need to depend upon the other thing that I wanted to discuss before we uh, start talking numbers is we're only going to be talking about an off-grid setup. So in other words, like you see in the picture, you need a solar panel, you need a charge controller, you need a battery, you need an inverter. Those four components are non-negotiable. You have to have them. That's the only type of setup we're going to talk about. We're not going to talk about a grid tied system because uh, there's lots of variability there. There's different ways you can set that up with you know micro inverters versus uh, bigger inverter I mean and then you've got the uh, installation cost where you really need to get a licensed electrician involved so we're not going to talk about that we're only going to be talking about off-grid okay so let's go ahead and talk about these components individually this is on the lower end this is a 20 watt panel you've seen it in a couple of my vid videos um, <clears throat> when you're dealing with really small panels, you're going to pay a little bit more per watt than you do for some of the, the middle and higher end panels. Um, just because, you know, there's more material other than the wafers themselves. So, <clears throat> generally speaking, you're going to probably spend about $2 to $3 per watt for uh, for these. Now, if you hunt for a good deal, you can you can probably still get them for about a buck fifty a watt. This one uh, in particular was thirty dollars, so it's in that dollar fifty um, per watt range. It's a twenty watt panel. So this is a, a good uh, example of a lower end panel. It's twelve volts. Uh, almost all of the low end panels are going to be twelve volts. You can find really small ones, four volt panels, three volt, six volt panels, but I'd recommend you stay away from those. Okay, and here we have a, about a medium sized panel. This is a one hundred watt panel. Um, this one in particular is made by Grape Solar and cost me 130 bucks uh, with free shipping from Amazon. So it's still relatively about in that dollar, dollar twenty-five a watt range with shipping, um, which is about the best you're going to get right now. Now on the larger end, uh, the ones that you use to kind of put all over the roof of your home or whatever, these are big panels. You're going to 100% guaranteed to pay shipping freight costs so expect uh, you know high shipping cost but generally speaking um, you can usually find something um, you can get down into the dollar per watt range um, if you really look now that's not paying for the name brands like the LG's and the Kyocera and some of those name brand but if you if you're smart about shopping you can find about a dollar per watt uh, on up to, I mean, you can spend a lot higher for name brand panels or for more advanced technologies, but generally speaking, $1 to $2 per watt plus freight shipping is about what you can expect. And here we have a good example of a low end charge controller. Um, a lot of these will just be Chinese knockoff uh, units or, or just no name, um, and they'll be available on eBay or Amazon or something for $20 or less. Sometimes you can find them for 10 bucks. I think this that's what I paid for this one. Um, they're nothing special. The electronics in them are, are not that great, so this is great for learning on, but you really don't want to be depending upon this. And here you have um, kind of a middle range, uh, since we're talking middle of, of the road, got about a middle range um, charge controller here. This is a TriStar uh, TS60. Um, this one is a little bit under $200. It's not MPPT, 
but it's about as good as you're going to get non-MPPT and um, it can handle 60 amps and uh, that's a pretty decent system that a lot you know is definitely beyond kind of the beginner phase and for the large uh, charge controllers expect to pay much more now when you're when you're installing a home system you're probably going to want to move to the maximum power point tracking or MPPT technology which in increases the cost and you need reliable components that you can count on that are going to be safe and that you can depend on every day to provide you with power so you're probably going to be in the 400 and up range 400 to a thousand dollars a piece for these things and as it shows uh, in this uh, picture you'll probably need multiple charge controllers depending on how many panels you have and how many batteries you have and so forth for small hobby systems you can use uh, sealed lead acid batteries like shown here these are great because they're fairly cheap um, and they do not require any maintenance. And now these are going to cost you um, approximately $2 per amp hour on the battery. And then here we have kind of the middle of the road batteries, um, in my opinion. Now this is going to be, th these are definitely the step above the little um, sealed lead acid batteries that, that you play with in those smaller systems. Um, these are um, deep cycle batteries, but they're not renewable energy batteries. These are kind of the ninety dollar, hundred dollar um, variety from um, you know Costco, Sam's, uh, Walmart, whatever. For large systems, you're going to want to use batteries that are designed to handle the abuse and are very reliable. So, for example, this Trojan T one hundred five RE or renewable energy. Now these, uh, keep in mind, these are very expensive, very heavy, and they come in six volts. So you're going to have to put multiple batteries together in series to achieve the voltage you need. Okay, here's an example of a lower end inverter. These are the kind that you're going to see at your gas stations and, and at Walmart or, uh, or wherever for, you know, 20 bucks, 30 bucks or less. Um, these are, you know, they typically come with uh, the car adapter. So that's kind of what they're they're designed for but they're perfect for solar because they use 12 volts input and then they have you know your USB and or your well your your outlets and or your USB connections so that you can use them with with various loads and here you've got a good example of a middle of the road inverter this one still doesn't have a ton of watts I think this is only a 600 watt unit but this is a pure sine wave inverter and it's much cleaner power, much more expensive. This is a $200 inverter. And last but not least, for large inverters, um, you're still going to want to stick with pure sine wave so you can run your sensitive electronics and so forth, but you're going to need a lot more wattage, so expect to pay a lot more money. Uh, these are going to typically cost 400 to 1,000 or even more, depending on how many watts you want in one unit. Okay, so what does this all mean? Well, for small systems, uh, again, like I've shown in my Solar for Beginners series, um, expect to pay roughly $120 for the whole system. Now, we can argue till we're blue in the face about exact prices, but this is a pretty good ballpark, plus or minus uh, what you'll pay in real life in US dollars. For medium-sized systems, we're taking a little bit of a quantum leap here, and we're going with more robust uh, equipment, bigger, everything costs a little bit more. So you were looking at roughly $1,200, $1,300 in that range. Again, plus or minus a little bit, but that's, that's about what you can expect to graduate to the next level. And then for large systems, this is again another large quantum leap forward uh, in price and complexity. So you're looking at minimum six to $8,000, probably more like 8,500 to 10,000, to put in a, like a three kilowatt system is basically what I spec'd out here. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Hopefully this has been a little informative and eye-opening for some of you.